presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robin, how you doing, man? Yes, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner and primary breadwinner for my family. And if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, well, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling a problem with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Create the perfect relationship between you and your body. Treat your body with all love, honor, gratitude, and respect. When you make it a goal to adore your body and accept yourself completely, you learn to have a perfect relationship with anyone else you are with. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials trading up 441, NASDAQ up 312, S&P's up 80, gold contract flat, 1814 an ounce. You get silver up six cents, $21.62 an ounce. Light sweet crew down a buck 75, $112.40 a barrel. Notes and bonds, a 10 year note, down 27 ticks, trading 118.26. The 30 year for full point, plus 9 ticks at 138.20. And King Dollar. King Dollar down 799 ticks, trading 103.388. Euro is at 105. Yen is at 129. The British pound is at 124 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? We're going higher. You get a contraction of volume, for folks. More than like we're setting up an ABC structure on the way down. So you get the Qs up 812. You did 59 million shares. Bottom line, this can you know get up to ICE. ICE is laying out at 416 on the Qs, and right now you're at 408. We go into the NDX 100. We take a look at the NDX. Same type of setup. What do you have with the NDX? The NDX right now is up seven and a half points, 306. That number there up to ICE would get you uh, one, no, 315. Right now you're at 306. Gold. Gold contract's going to need more volume. Uh, bottom line, gave it up on price out here. You only have 130,000 contracts. Need a lot more contract volume than that. You hit 1834. Right now we're trading at 1814. Um, you know, we'll see where this baby closes out. But um, that's, that's. We had rejected lower price and had lighter volume yesterday and finished the ABC structure. So we'll see if that, this can get a bottom going. Uh, it should because the bottom line is that we have inside the dollar is that the dollar basically gave it up on price. The real kicker with the dollar, of course, is that <laughs> it's given it up on price uh, as a one-day wonder about a week and a half ago, too, and snap right back. So we'll see whether we get any follow-through. It came back inside the range, but we'll see if we get any follow-through. Okay, we are going to go over, we talked about, there we go, on this article that I was talking about yesterday. I'm going to go through this whole article, because this, to me, this is just a, not only a great article, but for all of us to really understand crypto, it says it all. You can make your own choices uh, as we go through this. And the reason I'm going over it, Evidently, it was behind the firewall at Bloomberg, so a lot of folks couldn't get it. So this will this will take. We'll do this segment in about ten minutes in the next segment, but you'll see just how amazing this is. Okay, so first off, it says crypto hedge mana hedge fund head predicted that Terra's sixty billion dollar up implosion. Uh, the guy's name is uh, Kevin Zhu. Okay, it's uh, he basically runs a uh, hedge fund. Okay. So the beginning of it, hacks, scams, Ponzi, rug pulls, and crashes are common in crypto. They happen almost every day. The recent collapse of Terra ecosystem and its UST stablecoin is different. Terra was pushed, was pitched, 
as an important experiment in an attempt to create a stable coin pegged to the U.S. dollar without relying on financial securities or over collateralized crypto assets as reserves. Last week's sudden collapse of the Terra project now puts this idea in doubt, and its loud, loudest critic is claiming victory. In a dr dramatic reversal for the coins involved, at its peak in early April, the market value of all Luna, the tokens that back the Terra stablecoin, was a stunning 41 million plus. 41 million, according to CoinGecko, placing it firmly in the top 10 cryptocurrencies until just a few days ago, there were almost 19 million worth of UST, 19 billion rather. Like many crypto projects, where a niche and confined to hardcore traders, Terra went main. Uh, okay, sorry. Unlike many crypto projects, which are niche and confined to hardcore traders, Terra went mainstream. It was backed and promoted by what parent company Terraform Labs triumphed as its all star roster of investors, including Arrington Capital, Delphi Digital, Pantera Capital. It was also a sponsor of the Washington National baseball team and has a huge army of self-described lunatics, which avidly promoted the project across social media. Galaxy Digital Chief Executive Officer Michael Novogratz, who invested millions in the endeavor, unveiled the Luna Tac 2 back in January. Teva's outspoken critic, Don Du Wan, is one of the main characters on the crypto Twitter often sparring with critics who warned the project would end badly. The most high profile of these critics was Kevin Zhu. Zhu is no crypto skeptic, having been in the industry since 2011, working as an early exchange called Buttercoin before running trading at Kraken. In 2018, Zhu launched his crypto hedge funds Galixo's Capital, named after the French mathematician who died in a duel. In an interview with Lord Lott's podcast, Zhu began, says he began to worry that Terra posed a schematic risk to the entire crypto space, and that he started to tweet about the dangers as a public service to let everyone else know, too. Indeed, Zhu has been strenuously warning about the risk of Terra Luna, on Twitter since the beginning of this year, portraying himself as Rome, going head to head with Khan's Carthage. Carthage. Last week, the historical analogy was borne out. Tens of billions of dollars in value had been wiped out with little sign of recovery. A spokesman for Dukon declined to comment for this. To understand what wrong, it helps explain how Terra was supposed to work and why it's so unusual among the multiples of crypto investors that have sprung up in recent years. This will get a lot more interesting, I promise folks. You, you really wanna to get to understand this because as we go through this, you're gonna see that they, they talk about the aspect um, that you have to get in first and sell it to someone. And they, they tell you that. Stay right there folks, come right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Okay, so to understand what, we're at, what went wrong, it helps explain how tarot is supposed to work and why it's so unusual among the multiple of crypto inventories that have sprung up in recent years. The ultimate box. In, a vol in the volatile and fragmented world of cryptocurrencies, stable coins are a way to move money around with the confidence that you won't suddenly lose a large sum of it. To maintain a steady value, usually a peg, that tries to stay as close to the U.S. dollar as possible. Many of these coins are backed by securities like treasuries, cash reserves, or over collateralized with some combination of crypto. But UST, that's Terra, tried to do something different. Instead of using assets to maintain its peg, it depended on a logarithm and an arbitrage me mechanism designed to promise that one UST, that's Terra, would always resemble one worth of Luna. If Luna is worth a dollar, then you would swap one UST for one Luna token. If Luna rose to $100, then one UST would entitle investors to 0 0.01 Luna and so forth. For crypto proponents who distrust fiat currencies, the ability to create a stable currency without links to the traditional financial system is an important goal. That's their goal for sure. Stable coins are a key feature and decentralized finance or DeFi, allowing investors to transact in cryptocurrencies and digital assets. They are used in a wide variety of lending, borrowing, trading, now get this one, and yield farming programs. Keep that in mind, the yield farming. Despite this money pouring into the space and seemingly high returns on offer, it's still unclear where a lot of that yield comes from. Well, that's the, one of the keys here in this. In the Odd Lots interview last month, Sam Blankfield, Blankman Fried, the CEO, this is, a, this is unbelievable, and co-founder of exchange FXT described DeFi, DeFi as basically a magic box. It's a magic box, all right, folks, okay? People put their money, now listen, listen to this, this is, his, this is him talking. People put their money in the box, incentivized by a award of some token, and then more money goes into the box. Over time, the box is worth a lot of money. And perhaps the box becomes a bank, or accumulates in some other important projects. But it doesn't really matter. Here's the kicker. So long as you get in the box early and sell before everyone else does. According to Zoo, Luna was not just any box, 
but a particularly egregious ones, which was designed to enrich insiders. Now, here was where we get really interesting. No wonder why uh, the guy from Galaxy put a Luna Tac 2 on him. While the Luna Terra Arbors kept the two assets steady in terms of their relationship with each other, it was, an eye, it was the eye-popping yields of 20% on offer in the project's anchor protocol that lured them into the ecosystem in the first place. So if you had your, your Luna cone and you put it in the box, folks, you were making 20% on it. Now, no one knows where the 20% was coming from. We know it's a Ponzi scheme, but let me go on through it because they, they're telling you it's a Ponzi scheme. That all of them are Ponzi schemes, actually, not just this one. I would say that certain boxes are a little bit more honest in the sense that it's kind of like a chicken game. It's users competing with users, and the earlier you are, the better you do. I know it sounds really bad. It is really bad, he said. But what I'm saying is that even worse than that, because it's really not just users competing against users. Here we go. It's more like users thinking they're competing against other users, but really all their funds are being siphoned off by the insiders and the investment team. Okay? Because you'll see why, folks. This is crazy. So where did the promised 20% return come from? Technically speaking, Zhu said, it came from a private stash of Luna tokens, which was held by the Terraform Labs. When the Terra ecosystem first got started, there were some funds that were set aside for the company itself. And the main company is Terraform Labs. And they have a huge stash of Luna which unlocks over a certain vesting schedule. Of course, they, have as, <laughs> they can have as many billions as they want. So what would do, so what would, so what they do in order to finance their operations and finance the anchor yield fund, they would sell, check this out, large clips of this to willing investors at some kind of a discount that also had a one-year cliff or some kind of vesting schedule, something like that. And then they would use that for the operations, and they would also use it to basically keep topping up the anchor protocol on their year reserve, meaning that, you know, it's, it's a gaff. They're just putting more in, making like there's more. I mean, it's diluting everyone else. Okay, Zoo then also gave a similar explanation as to where the 20% re return come from. What I always like to say is that most of the time, if you can't find where the yield is coming from, then effectively it's coming from the future bag holders. The entire crypto system is arguably riven with this phenomenal. Yield comes from the assumption that someone else will bring new money into the system, the new bag holder, enter the game and pay out yield to the existing ones. What made Terra stand out was the huge yield an offer and a tanker program, giving investors the impression of significant upside with potentially little risk. This is also what made Luna grow so exponentially, uh, extraordinarily, in such a short period of time. Of course, this type of growth hacking can be fantastic, but it also can be a curse. In some aspects, Luna became a victim of its own success, draining reserves at an incredibly fast pace by burgeoning community of Terra holders who were eager to grab those 20% returns. I think at the peak, they were burning about seven million a day on the yield reserve, Zeus said. And originally, I think the reserve was something like 50 million or 60 million or something like that. And then they had to top it off with 450. And then, you know, very quickly soon, all of that was depleted and they were thinking about how much to do on another top off. In theory, Terra could have loaded its offering yield and slowed down its cash, but then risk is then the risk investors, then that would have risk investors abandoning the UST system. One way to think about Luna is that it's a perpetual motion machine, something doomed to fail as the energy needed to sustain it eventually dwindles to nothing. But another way to think of it is that a Rube Goldman machine in which Zoo puts out someone's turning a hand crank and keeps the system going. Terra arguably had two hand crakes to keep its me mechanisms going. The first was the private stash of Luna tokens, which would be liquidated to keep the UST holders happy. But then also this year, the Luna Foundation, technically a Singapore nonprofit designed to promote Luna systems, started building up a watch list of Bitcoin that could be deployed to intervene and stabilize the peg when needed.
In doing so, they borrowed from the world of traditional finances, essentially building a buffer of big FX reserves in the same way that a central bank of governments do in order to deploy when they need to defend their currencies. With such a move, while such a move might work in fiat authorities, it signaled to Zhu that there was a major problem with the Terra Luna model. For a start, Bitcoin's highly volatile. For a stable coin pursuing stability, putting assets in a combustible cryptocurrency might provide very little ballast in times of trouble. The Bitcoin stockpile is also funny. Yes, you can spend more to bolster Terra, but eventually you run out unless you have some other way to secure the ongoing supply. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 436. Nasdaq's up 312. S&Ps are up 80. I want to finish that story, folks, but right now we're going to bring our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, on. We're going to be talking markets. And, of course, don't forget, Basil does a Outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. Go into newsletters. You hit that opening call. It's right on your left-hand side. And you, you hit subscribe. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for one year for $1,195 which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So you can come over, take your choice, you try it out. It, you know, 30 days later, if it doesn't work for you for some reason, guess what? You get your money back. Let's get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. What's going on, Basil? Hi, Tom. What's going on is I think we're actually stepping into summer for the first time. That's a, I heard it's going to be, well, it's, it's going to be hot up there this weekend, I guess, huh? 
I hope so. Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man. Totally. Yeah, we des we deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you definitely do, man. <laughs> so let's take a look at this market, Basil. So last time we spoke, last Tuesday, I was saying to you that I think I'm getting ready. I, we've built up a, for subscribers to my opening call. We built up a big cash position, one of the biggest cash positions we've had in a long time. And that we'll probably start putting money to work very soon. Well, on the Thursday low, when the Dow went to 31,222 on the 12th, the candle that was formed, and I discussed this with you, I told you that in my work, I like to draw trend lines and arches, but there was a particular uh, two trend lines making a little mini channel that was coming down. Price had held that all the way through, um, but that's what I call the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. If it holds as support, it could be a nice turnaround uh, area. So it went just below but closed within it. And um, I thought this is perfect. So on the on the early pullback on Friday morning, I, we, we went long. So um, we went long the Dow. We have a core position going back to the low of 2020. Um, but uh, <clears throat> basically, this is this is a new position, a shorter term position. And at the same time, I like very much, even though. <laughs> If I'd listened to the news, I would never have done it. But I did my analysis, and I see, you know, the QQQ, the index 100, has done exactly the same thing. Here's this trend line coming down. The price went right inside. The MACD looked like the histogram was starting to improve in the daily chart. Stochastic was not nearly as bad as it was earlier in April. And I thought that there was a chance that this was a positive divergence that could produce some results. But... It needed to do certain things before I was guaranteed anything. So on uh, there again, we, we, went, we went long. We went long, actually, um, a little more aggressively in the QQQs. And so far, it's working out well. But for this to be, uh, and we also, we've got some very uh, low price stocks. I like to have a mix for subscribers of uh, you know, maybe double or triple digit stocks. But I also like to put in single digits because if it's in the right sector and things are working out well, they can very nicely move uh, at the same time. So in this particular instance, I just wanted to say that in the QQQ index 100 trading vehicle, <clears throat> there's been a nice move up today. This is leg B. The MACD hasn't yet crossed positive. That means the histogram is good. But I, I would prefer if it suddenly crossed positive, it'll be the first time since it crossed negative way back the 7th of April when the price of the QQQs were at the 200 period moving average up in the 358, 360 area. So this is a big pullback that we've had. I don't think this is the low, but I think it's at this point I'm treating it as an acceptable low that we could use as a trade. But to really get a confirmation, I need to see it's at 306.36 right now. The QQQ needs to trade. It needs to close a couple of times over the 14-period moving average, which is at this particular point is at 308.15. So it's got a bit of a way to go. And I would also like not this leg B to turn into a peak D and such a small move. I like this, this leg B. I like when leg Bs are very strong. So that's it's almost the same thing for the Dow. The Dow right now is in leg A. I like the takeoff to be very strong. A or B needs to really get a good a good percentage move off the low. So this is a nice starter position in terms of a turnaround. The weekly chart says yes, the Dow held in the same this uh, a much longer term inside track propellant zone. So this is nice, but the technicals need a lot of work and the QQQ went right through. So this is, all I'm doing now is trying to treat these as trades. But there are times where if you get it right, it gives you some comfort because as the market whipsaw is trying to get some traction to the upside, you've got good support. So I like I like the positions that we've got right now. I also prefer that if we can get turnaround areas, either at the top or the bottom, very close to the actual turning point, it just gives you a nice cushion because as prices start to rally, if it's from the bottom up, it means that every time there's some kind of a whipsaw, in other words, if we make a peak and there's a pullback before you get to leg C, if you're in comfortably just off the lows, it means you've got a, a bit of a cushion there because the price shouldn't 
go back to your entry point. If it does, that's usually a big negative, so it's, it's a good thing to get out. So I'll raise the stop as we move higher. <clears throat> and at the same time, uh, looking at the different, you know, I'd spoken to you for, for a long time now that we've got the DB agricultural um, food. This is the agricultural sector ETF. Yeah, the DBA, uh, right. Yeah. The DBA, DB Agriculture Fund. And uh, it ran up, we were in the 1377 for a long time now. It pulled back from 2288 down to 2127. But you and I have been talking about for ages that when. The Fed keeps talking about inflation, inflation, and both of us said when the Fed suddenly realized that inflation's out, when the genie's out the box, it's really hard to put it back in. And I think we start, starting to see that. I mean, look what happened to wheat. Uh, this is wheat is in this uh, agricultural fund. Look at this. This is wheat breaking out. It had the spectacular move. Remember, it went up to 1363 and a half on the 8th of uh, uh, March. <clears throat> I discussed this Roman candle. I gave a whole uh, analysis of what happens in the Chapman Wave. A, a Roman candle, if it goes halfway into the wick, look out, can pull back sharply. Well, it plunged from 1363 down to around about 1,000, and I think it was just about 1,080, or maybe a little lower. Yes, about 1,010. And now I saw another move, and it's back at 1279. <clears throat> so this is part of that. This is the thing with 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 the grains. Uh, it's very difficult to to produce them. You have a certain time, and if it doesn't get done in that particular time, that that could lead to shortages. So I I think that the agricultural sector is saying that uh, got to be careful. Uh, this is uh, something not to ignore. It's going to impact grocery products, uh, just a lot of things. Yeah, no, there's there's no doubt, man. I mean. Uh, well, you get, I believe that like either three, uh, one half of the wheat production, you know, Ukraine is a monster wheat producer. It's, it's huge. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. it's not just great. I mean, it's all the grains. It's, it's a lot of things. Yeah. And I don't know, even if, let's just say they start to get production back again. Well, I, this is the summer. How are they going to get it to port? How are they going to ship it? I yeah. Mean, this, and what's happening is, in the U.S., the bottom line is that, unfortunately, folks, it's whacked out this year. Where the wheat is being planted, there's a drought, so they're not going to get anything. And then where uh, the beans are being planted, there's too much water. So there's, there's trouble in paradise out here. Folks, you can get Basil's newsletter by coming over to our website at TFNN. Hit those newsletters and get that opening call. Thanks, Basil. Thank you, Tom. Have a Are day you day. in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 414, NASDAQ's up 301, S&P's are up 66. Okay, we're going back to the... Uh, Terra and Luna and Bitcoin. Okay, so for, for a start, Bitcoin is highly volatile. I'm, I'm just repeating this last paragraph so we can get back on track here. For stable coins pursuing stability, putting assets in a combustible cryptocurrency might provide very little ballast in times of trouble. The Bitcoin stockpile is also finny. Yes, you can spend to bolster Terra, but eventually you're gonna run out unless you have some kind of way to secure an ongoing supply. And you might end up playing an intense p p game of poker with the market. For Zoo, there was an even bigger problem with Terra's Bitcoins. The whole project is supposed to be self-writing with an advanced logarithm dedicated to keeping Luna and Terra on an even keel. By buying Bitcoin, Terra was implicitly suggesting that it hadn't built a machine that could run on its own. That's, that, that statement right there is a big one, folks. It's destroying their narrative because, like they basically said that, oh, we finally constructed a perpetual motion machine. Behold, everyone, we finally did it, you know, and it's working and it's amazing. Oh, but actually, you know, just in case it doesn't work, let's get some insurance. While Zhu had identified the vulnerabilities in the Terra Luna for a while, he hesitated to bet against it. And as the adage goes, markets can stay irrational for longer than you can stay solvent. And Zhu didn't see that changing anytime soon. Last summer, Luna was trading around $5. By April, it was closer to $120 and the machine was going. Arguably, Luna was benefiting from the overall bear market in crypto that started last November. Now watch why it was benefited, folks. If everything's going down and you want to be safe but stay in crypto, you might park your money in stable coins, which the market did. Stay in the ecosystem, but try to avoid the overall volatility. And since Terra was a high-yielding stable coin and Luna was closely linked to Terra, for a few months, Luna almost acted as a negative beta asset that could be used to hedge the overall market. That's the crypto market. A dynamic which no doubt bolstered the confidence of many lunatics. All of this meant that shorting Luna was extremely risky. Even if you understood that ultimately, the ecosystem couldn't be sustained without continuous inflows of money. Ponzi scheme, for sure. In fact, Zhu said as much publicly in February that he, it wasn't yet time to bet against the Rube, Gold, Rube Goldberg. But in May, as crypto markets, here we go, so this is where it's going to get really cool. But in May, as crypto markets began to fall and assets which had seen the evaluation soar in recent years tumble back to earth, Zhu was watching. Also in his sights was a, dr 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 a drama unfolding on decentralized platform called Curve. An automated market maker similar to Uniswap, Uniswap. Curve comes with a charming 8-bit Nintendo and is designed specifically to swap stable coins. Terra traded on Curve against a group of other stable coins. 
USDC, Tether, and DAI, D-A-I, which was called Three Pool. As Zoo puts it, Terra was acting as a bit of a sidecar arbitrarily attached to this group of stable coins. But there was a plan underway to, to create a new basket called Four Pool, which would include USDC, UST, Tether, and another stable coin called Frax. The goal was to kick out DAI, D-A-I, a coin for which Don Duan effectively saw his arrival. Around May 7th, someone for multiple parties appeared to make a huge sale of Terra, swapping it for USDC. Terra, no, no, okay, what's it? Around May 7th, someone on multiple parties appeared to make a huge sale of UST, swapping it for USDC, Tether, and DAI. While Curve is optimized to trade stable coins in large sizes, the selling was so big that UST liquidity basically vanished and the first real deviation from the peg emerged. Other assets were drained from these pools. And that basically caused a bit of a panic. Other people pulled money out of Anchor, and Anchor is where Tether is, folks. People try to find ways to get rid of their Terra. Luna started tanking. The entire markets were already tanking. It was kind of like an alignment of the stars. The equity markets were tanking. The cryptos were correlated with the equity markets these days. So everything was dropping. And on top of that, the migration was happening. So it was a symphony of perfect sequences of events. The trades have since become a linchpin around the variety of conspiracy theories that are now swirling. Who exactly sold the UST in such large chunks? Was it intentionally done at a time when Luna was preparing for a migration to four pool and might therefore be a liquid and vulnerable? Was this a George Soros breaking the pound trade or was it just panicking market and a bunch of money attempting to exit a stable coin that was thought by many to be, to be particularly risky, regardless of who might have made the trades and why. This is the moment when it all start unraveling. And the event that blockchain uh, archaeologists will probably be exploring for a long time. The siege of Carthage had begun. Looking back, it's rather remarkable how quickly it all unwound. A few weeks ago, there were more than 60 billion, 60 billion of market cap in Luna and Terra. Then just over a week ago, it started to crack. Now it's number swiftly approaching zero. And Zeus telling, once the machine started malfunctioning, it was difficult to stop. This thing is a purely reflexible asset. He said, once the mechanism broke down, there were no curbs, no natural circuit breakers, no emergency lending from the Federal Reserve, no bailout from private investors. There were suggestions at one point last week that external help might be on the way. There was no natural cash flow that would entice a crypto Warren Buffett to step in and buy the things for cheap. But after the fast downward spiral came the slow death. Throughout all the drama, UST Luna swapping mechanisms were still operating. UST sellers were still theoretically entitled to a dollar worth of Luna. But watch this, this is crazy. But that was meant, but what that meant was that as Luna was crashing, the system had to create more and more tokens to meet the UST redemption demands. If Luna is worth a dollar, then the UST holder is entitled to one token. But if Luna is worth 10 cents, then the UST holder is entitled to 10 tokens. As Luna plunged, more and more Luna was created. That caused the price to plunge even more, as holders were massively diluted. That, in turn, meant that the next round of Terra Redeemers required even more Luna. Ex uh, ex making the dramatic down would spiral. It effectively meant that cryptocurrency that had been often pitched as a head against, hedge against inflation was effect, if, effectively being slowly inflated away. This is actually worse than hyperinflation, said Zhu. It's hyperinflation of hyperinflation. By the morning of May 13th, one Luna was down to 0 
three, four. And the total supply of the coin was 6.5 trillion. Despite the spectacular implosion of Terra, it seems likely that the crypto community will not give up its pursuit of a coin that can maintain a stable value. Last month, Sam Casimir, founder of the stablecoin Frax, wrote to Bloomberg columnist Matt Levine to explain how his coin would evolve. Our own structure won, not Ponzi, 100% back normal bank, except slow, slowly unbacking, then finally Ponzi, like the, like the Fed, okay? So, in other words, the dream is that if you pedal hard enough, this is really cool here, if you pedal hard enough in the beginning by backing, by creating a back stable coin, then over time you can remove the backing because everyone will just accept the coin is worth a dollar. Even when the mechanism to enforce the peg goes away, for crypto adherents, it's not too dissimilar how they view the history of the dollar. The greenback built the power by being backed by gold, they say, but eventually departed the standard once it cemented its status. Of course, the dollar doesn't need to be pegged to the dollar, it simply is the dollar. What's more, there are all kinds of mechanisms in place that bolster the currency's value, including taxes, which enforce the need to hold the dollar in the first place. But again, one of the core ideas of crypto is that everyone just believes hard enough, if everyone believes hard enough, then you can create something of value. And arguably, that idea has proven itself out with Bitcoin, which is not backed by anything except the beliefs of its various holders. Still, the Terra episode is already is already a large black eye on crypto and one that might not be forgiven for a long time. Many retail investors have been devastated with stories of life savings, loss, suicide attempts. Big names in the space left answer for what they they would get behind the disaster. Um, Even crypto investors without direct terror exposure are sitting on big losses because of this. Still, Zone warns that monetary losses and reputational damage could have been much worse. Better that this happened now than later. You know, if terror was $100 billion and eventually there was $95 billion of bad debt, or $90 billion of bad debt, I mean, it would be worth more devastation. More, even more people would lose. Cartage was eventually rebuilt, and it seems that someone is going to try it again with, to build that magic coin. That would be a coin that's decentralized, not relevant on assets to back it, and still able to maintain its peg, like a top that can spin forever after getting its initial twist. This is what's so crazy about this, folks, okay? So check this out. You gotta go back to the deal that what you have here is this. You have the aspect that the people that make the coins, right? This is, when you read this, and if you get it, the people that make the coins, this is how this goes. They can have as many coins as they want. They put the coins out into the marketplace. Because of the greed of people, what ends up happening, they say, okay, I want to get into this coin for a penny, two pennies. This is going to go to $3. I'm going to, I'm going to get out and I'm going to sell it to someone else. It's the hot pay there, as, as, as some of the targets are saying. The key that I got out of this, and this, that when you read this through, is that the inventors, the software folks that know what the heck is going on, no, and no wonder why uh, Norwood, Norwood Grants got an attack too. <laughs> he was the, an, an initial investor inside Terra Labs, okay? And Terra Labs had as many as they wanted. So when this was going on, they could sell into it. Now, this gets even better because Galaxy, so watch this. Yeah. I got to get this. Okay, I, I can't pull it up quick enough, but check this out. So Galaxy, which is a public company in Canada, not in the United States. You probably couldn't get away with it in the United States. Um, and this is no, Novacrance. When you, I went through his, uh, the, the last two filings, right? He made a billion dollars, that company, not last quarter. Last quarter was like 300 million. The quarter before is a billion dollars by selling into the marketplace, okay? So they're telling you that it's a Ponzi scheme. And they're also telling you, well, yeah, it's a Ponzi scheme, but that's what the Fed is, too. Well, the big difference, folks, <laughs> no doubt, is that if you want to be involved in a Ponzi scheme, God bless you, okay? Because I'd like you to just get that wrapped around your head, tell your friends to read it, because there's so many people that are involved in this, and there's a lot. 
all of us know plenty of people that are involved in it. I, I get asked all the time, man. And, you know, on some of these younger kids, man, yeah, there's only $300, $500, or $1,000. But guess what? When you were a kid, that's all you had. The, there's, the amount of money that these people are taking from people is freaking disgusting, man. And they know it's a Ponzi scheme. I mean, it blows my mind that it took this long for someone to write a decent article to really figure it out. Dow, Dow up 396, Nasdaq up 305, S&P's up uh, 26. Always remember, folks, the bank and claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 o'clock in the morning. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one. Look at them, folks.